people are tired, they're fatigued. I understand all of that. Uh, it's made harder when you have county officials, one of my colleagues who goes out to businesses that have been ordered to close and touts how they're doing everything safely, even though our own enforcement teams that go out there document that they're not following the rules and not only not following the stay at home orders, but they aren't following the rules of what you would do if you were even allowed to be open. And, and all of that is creating tremendous dissension and conflict and all that is compromising our ability to effectively respond uh, to COVID-19. Uh, that effort was further uh, challenged uh, by a recent court decision uh, and a decision I believe the judge is fundamentally wrong. And, and I wanna walk through uh, what we're facing there. The judge came in and had a case in front of him filed by two strip clubs. And in the initial ruling, the, the judge cited First Amendment and free expression items as that's why strip clubs could be open. And I have read the entire Federalist Papers. Never once did I hear the Founding Fathers uh, envision the exploitation of women and stripping as a First Amendment issue. Um, but there is a lot of case law that has been decided over the years that, that tends to put some adult entertainment in that category. But it was about two strip clubs. But when the judge came back for a full hearing, he expanded it to include all restaurants in San Diego County, even though they were not party to the lawsuit and part of the lawsuit. And his ruling, which is convoluted and murky and unclear, has put the county in a position where we are forced to temporarily stop enforcement uh, of the public health orders as it relates to restaurants. And, and I think that this has a potential devastating impact at a point at which we are entering our darkest phase and darkest hour and that it continues to sow public confusion and doubt uh, when a judge comes out and says, I don't see a link between restaurants and COVID cases. Uh, and I think that the judge is fundamentally wrong and I am confident that it will be overturned on appeal. The state of California has filed an appeal. An hour from now, the San Diego County Board of Supervisors will meet in a closed session to discuss if the county is going to continue an appeal as well. Although I wanna be clear, that vote is entirely symbolic because the decision has already been appealed by the state of California. And so regardless of what the Board of Supervisors does has no bearing uh, on that case. But I wanna to get to the heart of, of what's happening out there because I think it's important that we put information out there and we share it with you uh, in a way that, that you can process and understand because my hope is folks will understand that the orders that are put in place, no one wants to impact anyone's business negatively. No one wants to hurt anyone's livelihood. No one wants anyone to go without work, but we are facing a global pandemic, the likes of which we have never experienced in our life. And if we let it rage completely out of control and we collapse our entire healthcare system, the negative impact to our community and society will be far greater than the negative impact of the steps we're taking to try and avoid that situation. And so it, it's not out of a, a willful disregard for people's desire to make a living. It is out of a desire to protect our community, to save lives and to stop us from hitting a critical juncture and, 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 and really devastating place uh, where we have to go. Uh, I'm also hopeful that the federal government uh, will, will pass something to provide economic assistance and relief. I know if that had been there in a robust way the entire time, it would be easier to get through what we're getting through. Uh, but we can't ignore the realities in front of us. And so many of the people that just advocate open everything, it'll all be fine. None of them have ever said how, when we go from two to 300 cases a day to now over 3,000 cases a day, how do you change that trajectory? Will you do it by limiting the mixing of individuals, by limiting the mixing of households, and you do it by limiting the highest risk settings? So you constantly hear there's no data to support that indoor dining and restaurants and these other activities are a significant contributor to COVID and a part of the spread. Well, we know that what we're doing will work because of our own experience. If you think back to June and July, we had a significant spike in cases and we took measures incredibly similar to what we're taking now. And it wasn't magic that the cases came back down because when you limit high risk settings, particularly indoor settings where folks are not wearing a face covering like you see in a restaurant type setting. When you limit the mixing between households, you limit the transmission of COVID-19. We also know when you look at people who get infected, that one of the highest categories of workers who contract COVID are food service workers and restaurant workers, because that is where it is most prevalent and where it spreads the most. One of the only ones that's higher is healthcare workers. 
Well, that makes sense. They're indoors. They've been open the whole time and they're exposed to COVID patients. But we know because of that. But one of the things that you hear time and again is, is, that, is that you can't show based on the people who got COVID that they all got it at a restaurant. But think about how that works. If you get COVID and a case investigator contacts you and they say, where's everywhere you went in the preceding 10 days? How are they supposed to ascribe which one of the 25 different places you went is the one place that you contracted it? It would be irresponsible to try to do that. It is, it is highly unlikely that they ever do that. We talk a lot, there's a lot of talk about outbreaks and we've talked a lot about this here, but all of the cases tied to an outbreak represent less than 5% of total cases because it is exceedingly difficult to pinpoint exactly where someone got it. But there is volumes of data that tell you what the highest risk settings are. Not only our own experience, not only the data surrounding which workers are, are most likely and contracted in the highest numbers, but a volume of data that tracks the spread of COVID-19 and how it spreads and where it is most likely to spread. And I'm gonna walk you through just a couple uh, of, of, again, hundreds and hundreds of pages of data, peer-reviewed scientific journals that tell you and are guiding the decisions uh, around the actions that we are taking. And I've posted them in the comments here so that you can review them for yourself. The first is a uh, study in Nature, a peer-reviewed study. You can go through all of the charts and all of the methodology and all of the information surrounding it here, which found large variations in predicted reopening risks in full-service restaurants, gyms, hotels, cafes, religious organizations, and limited-service restaurants produced the largest predicted infection when reopened. And they went through, literally through all of the data to show you the highest risk settings. The second one we have here is a CDC study that, that talks about outbreaks associated, right, with air conditioning restaurants, particularly in China. And you can see here, case patients were more likely to have reported dining at a restaurant in an area designated by restaurants, including indoor, patio, and outdoor seating in the weeks preceding. Center for Disease Control, CDC study that walks through. Let's go to another CDC study. This one talking about observing clusters of COVID-19 cases from healthcare facilities. We've talked about that. Care facilities, nursing homes, restaurants, or bars are right there. Again, analyzing everything that we've seen, scientific study that tells you that. Next, you can go to one published in Science Magazine, right, which walks through business closures and gathering bans have been effective at reducing COVID-19 transmission, closing most non-essential face-to-face businesses, was more effective, right? And in particular, it talks about the highest risk settings being bars, restaurants, and nightclubs in table one. You can go through and read the entirety of the science study, but again, volume of data supporting it. Here is another one. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Case patients were more likely to have reported dining at a restaurant, area designated, patio, in the two weeks. Again, another explanation and walkthrough for why we're doing it. Here's one that was tracking transmission in Korea uh, around airborne nature of this, outlining the dangers of airborne transmission. And when you think about the transmission of COVID as a viral load, if two people are in proximity to each other and one of them is infected but asymptomatic does not know, and the other one is not, if they pass each other in a grocery store or in a Target and they're both wearing a mask, it is a limited duration and intensity of exposure, it is lower risk. Plus, you have to go to the grocery store because people have to eat. But when two people sit and one of them is asymptomatic but has COVID and one does it without a mask for an hour or an hour and a half talking and joking and telling stories, as you do in restaurant type settings, it is exceedingly high. And so to have a judge come out and say that there's no data to support that restaurant settings are more dangerous is to find thousands of pages of research our own experience with what we went through in June and July, along with the information around who's contracting it. And, and I fear that it, it causes a significant impact in our ability to respond. And so no one wants to close any businesses at all. None of us want to be doing any of this. I went out and saw a business owner the other day and their business is closing because they went through with COVID. And he said, Nathan, you didn't close my business. The public health order didn't close my business. COVID-19 closed my business. And there are negative impacts from the things that are being taken, but they are less severe 
than what will happen and what I fear will be coming uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Uh, and so we continue to plead with each of you, please, you have to make an individual decision and choice. You can't count on the enforcement, you can't count on the courts, you have to count on each other. We are seeing record cases. The strain on our healthcare system is immense and we have to find a way as a community to get this under control. And we have to understand that the actions we take today will not reap benefits for many weeks. I'm somewhat hopeful that a few weeks ago when we started this, that folks started changing behavior, but our cases are continuing to climb. And as we head into the holidays, again, please, please, please be mindful. The measures being put in place are based on data. They are based on science. They are based on public health experts, uh, and they are based out of a desire to protect our community, uh, to look out for one another and to get us through this incredibly difficult time, incredibly difficult time with the least harm. We can rebuild a lot of things, but we can't rebuild the lives that are lost. We can't rebuild the damage that's been done. And so please, please, please join with each and every one of us in supporting each other, uh, looking out for each other, supporting our public health experts. Let's be safe. Let's get through this together. Thank you.